Hey Tech Talk viewers, this is Dan from the Chan Clan and I am reviewing the recent addition to my computer system here, which is the LG Ultrafine Display 32UL950. Now, I am a, um, you know, enthusiast, uh, graphics and photographer uh, user, uh, but also enjoy gaming. So in a quest to find a good match of good color accuracy, uh, but also serve uh, to be able to edit my photos, yet also be a decent gaming monitor, um, I was hard pressed to find something to replace my old Dell 30-inch uh, U3011-3014 uh, Ultra Sharp Premier, holy smokes, that's a handful, uh, monitor. And while I was looking at the Dell options, um, LG's latest entry into these prosumer, uh, consumer slash professional uh, models uh, drew my attention. Now, this monitor in particular had been delayed. It had a K-series before it turned into a U-series. The K-series never materialized. Um, and even the U-series has been uh, poorly adopted just because uh, this is a interesting niche model in that it has a little too much professional fe features uh, at too high of a price for most gamers, but yet is nowhere clear, you know, nowhere close to a reference monitor that a true professional would want. This kind of crossover between a gamer photographer is relatively niche, but you know what? That's what I am, and uh, I do photography as a hobby. Uh, I game for fun. Um, I wanted something that could suit all my needs without sprawling out of my desktop. So this is a good solution. Now, when I first saw this come out, uh, it was priced at $14.99, and I didn't jump on the bandwagon because a lot of people started complaining about panel uniformity issues, backlight bleeding. Uh, I waited until actually this sat on Amazon for a while and dropped down to $8.99. Uh, before picking this up. It's since rebounded up to the thousand range, uh, but for that price point, this made this uh, actually quite lucrative. Now, go, uh, you know, I have actually the uh, uh, just website from LG Open on the display, and you can see uh, some of the features of LG's ultra-fine display. Uh, it has uh, ultra-high definition, uh, 3840 by 2160 resolution. That was important for me. Um, as one of the uh, limitations of the prior Dell 30-inch uh, model was that it was only um, 2K. Uh, it had a 1600 resolution. This one goes up to 2160 for 4K. So, you know, having upgraded our graphics card, that was something I definitely wanted to uh, utilize in my next monitor just to give us some more working space and surface room as well. Uh, this is uh, VESA uh, HDR 600 certified. One thing I did notice about the screen, it is a lot brighter, so much so that my cali color calibration uh, tells me to turn it down. Um, if you like the brightness for HDR, uh, this certainly supports it. This, uh, uh, you know, I've kept my brightness up just to give this a little bit more contrast, although sometimes it kind of tires the eyes out. So, you know, that's something that can be adjusted. Um, one of the premium features of the uh, UL950 uh, or the 32UL950, you can see this is actually washing out some of the whites here, there we go, um, is that uh, it has Thunderbolt connectivity. Now Thunderbolt connectivity is kind of nice because this will allow you to use your future uh, MacBook or you know uh, some of the PCs, uh, not the surfaces yet, uh, but uh, hopefully in the future, uh, via USB-C Thunderbolt connection to directly go into the back of this monitor uh, to be able to uh, daisy chain the uh, the device directly to the monitor. And you can see those uh, Thunderbolt ports, ports on the back. This is where they are. Right now I have a USB-C reader um, over there. And uh, you have two of these right here. These are the USB-C uh, Thunderbolt ports. So two ports there, uh, traditional USB 3 ports. You have a DVI and then also a HDMI uh, port over there. This does have built-in speakers. The monitor has invisible speakers that uh, I don't use. These are little Bose ones instead. 
but that's a nifty feature in case I, you don't have any speakers that stand alone. Now, one of the concerns about this was color uniformity, uh, you know, the actual color of the um, screen itself was uh, a concern uh, because uh, the accuracy uh, was something I wanted for my photos. And uh, one of the features that they described was that the color was impeccable, um, that this was 98% of DCI P3 color, <clears throat> that it was 100% RBG, and uh, that this was VESA certified for uh, Display HDR 600. So um, this uh, does sport uh, some reasonable color accuracy. Uh, this is using my spider cal 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 colorometer uh, where we've calibrated this. And this is on a custom profile setting. Uh, and you can see how this plays out. That It does cover 100% of sRGB. Uh, for NTSC broadcast colors, this is 88%, and Adobe RGB it's 90, although sometimes I get 91% depending on the lighting. So this is no worse than my UltraSharp uh, Premier uh, mono panel from Dell in the past, and the colors uh, wise, I'm actually quite pleased with the uh, color accuracy here. In fact, this is a photo that I took at Horseshoe bend in Arizona. So this is a photo by me. Um, you can see here that uh, to my uh, visual liking, this uh, monitor uh, renders this out uh, wonderfully. And I actually had some of my other photos just in the background here. Here's another one from the beach. Um, whoops. Another one from the beach that we took one morning in Lanakai. And uh, the uh, colors are well saturated. Uh, I don't have any significant bleeding or leaking in the backlight. You know, maybe a tiny bit over here, but uh, this is no worse than my Dell panel. And then also, let's take a look here on my greens. Photo up here in the bamboo forest up in... Um, up in Maui, uh, nice saturation, bright, vivid colors. And again, uh, I checked this for dead pixels, did not have any dead pixels, and did not uh, have any significant banding issues with color uniformity. Now, one of the cool things about this monitor is actually, in case you're wondering where the controls are, go right to the center of the monitor. There's a little joystick right in the middle. Tap it once and you'll be able to get to a quick uh, knob of your settings here. Now you have fast game settings here where you can switch to FPS. I guess it washes out the colors a bit or real-time strategy. Now the way to get off of those is that you go into the main settings and you go back all the way up to your picture mode and you can select from a whole bunch of pictures. So this is the FPS mode. You can see that. The RTS mode, EBU, I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, Rec 709. We have all these different color calibrations. I'm on a custom one uh, right now, just so I know which one it was to, to profile my, uh, uh, I'm sorry, use my uh, colorometer to profile. There's a vivid, so it looks like we match uh, even more vivid than vivid. HDR effect, reader. Is less backlight, cinema, more contrast, sRGB, DCI P3. Now, somebody complained that the DCI P3 in some of the early reviews was grossly yellow. I actually see that the DCI P3 is pretty close to my calibrated, so I wonder if that was like a, just a bum panel that somebody got. But you'll notice that that custom looks awfully close to the DCI P3 factory calibration. So again, uh, having a colorometer helps uh, to kind of get your own custom calibration, but if you don't have that, then the DCI P3 um, setting, uh, factory uh, configured setting, was actually quite accurate. Now, one of the cool things about this, I am a NVIDIA user. Um, this is a 
AMD FreeSync monitor, meaning that it uses AMD's FreeSync standard to synchronize refresh, uh, for example, during gaming. But recently, um, NVIDIA also opened up FreeSync monitors uh, to G-Sync uh, capability. Fortunately, this was one of them. And one of the greatest things I've noticed through this uh, monitor is the absence of tearing visual effects uh, during first-person shooters, for example, Battlefield V. Um, we used to just notice uh, on especially these larger monitors uh, just tearing effects where the refresh rate and the frame rate would uh, misline and you would get kind of ripped images halfway through uh, your gameplay. So one of the cool things about the LG is that it does have a, a pretty fast response time as well. This is an IPS monitor. Its refresh rate is limited. It's not a gaming monitor to 60 hertz, but the trade-off is that you have a color depth of 1.07 billion, uh, which is 98% of DCI-P3, okay? Uh, brightness uh, between uh, 360 to 450, and contrast ratio is about 900 to 1300 to one. Okay, not the best. We're talking about 10,001 in OLED, but OLED does not have this type uh, of uh, refresh and also um, are not available in these panels this small uh, yet. Well, at, at this price point either. Now, um, the adaptive sync or the free sync is now compatible with uh, uh, G-Sync. So all you have to do is update your GeForce drivers and this will um, detect that. This nano IPS technology, I have no idea what exactly what they're saying, but it's just fancy LCD. And um, it is kind of premium in that regards. Um, what else? The five millisecond uh, gray to gray, uh, the gray to gray uh, response time. Um, pretty sure that's what G to G is. G to G monitor. Let's search that up. Gray to gray. It takes two milliseconds for a pixel to go from one state to the other. The monitor probably has a five millisecond B to B time. Gray to gray. Anyways, nerd speak. Nerd speak for faster response time. So with a faster response time or, you know, a five second millisecond, uh, this uh, helps with uh, your gaming as well. Uh, basically, uh, faster response equals uh, more uh, perceived um, or less perceived latency between your bullet fire and whatever. Um, basically, your draw times are going to be less bottlenecked at the level of the screen. So if you're that good that the frame in milliseconds uh, will help you game better, well then this is a consideration for you. Actually, you know what? If you're that concerned about that, you probably need a 144 uh, G-Sync monitor uh, that uses a TN uh, panel and worry less about your color accuracy, okay? Um, one of the coolest things about this monitor that uh, I like uh, is the fact that uh, it has a very thin uh, frame and uh, you know, it's not infinity edge, but uh, compared to before, um, this uh, leaves uh, the experience almost borderless, okay? Uh, it is pivotable in uh, a horizontal and vertical configuration. Uh, although right now I uh, don't uh, have that stand, uh, you know, uh, set that way. But you can rotate this if you want. Uh, two of these side by side, if you have a, uh, the desk space to do that, would be uh, glorious. The uh, sheer resolution of 4K allows you to uh, work more productively as you have more span to open up multiple images, multiple windows. Um, let me just launch up Word and Excel. And you can see even for office use, um, this is Word. Blank document here. You can take a document put it all the way over here and you can cascade multiple windows that are open all throughout the uh, the screen here and you can uh, basically have four large windows open here. One of the downsides of this monitor is that despite being a professional grade monitor 
they only give you a one year warranty, which I think is a little lame, LG, uh, that I would expect at least a three to five year warranty to stand by your product. Um, that's something Dell uh, does have a little bit better warranty. I've used that warranty before uh, for some backlight bleeding, ghosting, dead pixels. Uh, their dead pixel policy, I believe is five for this monitor. Now that'd be fine for a consumer monitor, but when this is priced at $12.99 retail, um, to go for the uh, pro consumer or prosumer, um, the uh, premium should buy you more than Thunderbolt. That's my uh, that's my opinion. Uh, but in the meantime, this uh, does fill a nice niche uh, where uh, this provides great color accuracy, but offers a um, compromise for the gamer photographer, if you will, uh, that wants to have um, fast response time and also adaptive sync that works with games, um, but also have uh, the color uh, for photography, the 4K resolution for both, um, and uh, a nice aesthetic design. So uh, despite the reviews out there that may be negative, uh, I certainly had a good panel. Uh, without significant bleeding, color banding issues, color shift issues, uh, with good uniformity. And so far, I'm very pleased by this monitor. The only drawback is that it has a higher sticker price compared to uh, similar models without Thunderbolt. Um, but I would highly recommend uh, this monitor for those who are like me that are looking for both color and gaming excellence. Thanks for watching. Leave me any questions in the comments below. Um, this is Dan with the Chan Clan. Subscribe.